After seven months of Park to Prem today, it's time to start something that little bit different. Union Berlin in the Bundesliga on a 2023-24 database update. This is a team that has had an incredible history and an incredible rise as of late. A team that have been known under many other names at different points through history. Now they're known as Union Berlin and now, for the first time in their history, they're playing in the Champions League football this coming season. Despite that though, you might have noticed it Media prediction of 12th. It'd be safe to say despite an incredible year last year where they finished 4th in the Bundesliga, for us in Football Manager, it's going to be tough to replicate that. Not just because the first team is lacking in a little bit of quality, which I'm going to hold up my hands and say it is. I mean, Robin Nock here is our best player, but also because financially, there's, there's not a lot of money to spend. I have to get a squad ready for Champions League football that is not ready for it with a transfer budget of £800,000. But Jack, I hear you say, surely there's some players to sell. Uh, I mean, the most valuable players are two players I've got in on loan from English clubs, which isn't exactly the best situation to be in. So you might be sat there thinking, Jack, this seems like it's going to be an interesting save, maybe a challenging save. What else can you tell us? Well, I'm only going to be allowed to sign one non-German player per season. All my transfers bar one have to have at least partial German nationality. And my aim ultimately is to try and take down this slot. Uh, Bayern Munich, quite good in football manager, quite good in real life as well, it turns out. And of course, with fellow Berlin club Hertha relegated to the Bundesliga 2, we might have a few cheap players we can pick up from across the city. This is episode one of this Let's Play. I'll be honest, I don't have a catchy name for the series yet. So if you've got a catchy name, please help me out. The, the Berlin Rebuild? No, it's not really a rebuild. But re Rebuild's good for SEO, isn't it? I digress. Let's get into things here. Let's run the intro. Get ready. A new Football Manager adventure is about to begin. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Work The Space, the YouTube channel where it's me, Jack. I've not changed. I'm the, still the same person. I don't know where this is going. So in the background here, you can see me setting up the save game for this database. If you want to follow along at home, I am using the FM Inside Summer Update that gets rid of the Winter World Cup, and I'm using that in conjunction with the Sort It Out SI data update. It's not the most simple thing to set up. I may do a separate video on it, and in fact, let's, let's do a youtuber -y thing, shall we? If this video hits, 5,000 likes before the end of the week. I will do a tutorial on how you can play on a summer updated database on Football Manager the way that I'm doing it here, which is a, a bit of a weird mixy way of doing things. We are force loading a load of players across the whole of Europe, although as I've already discussed, the issue for us is going to be I'm only allowed one non-German signing per season. That signing is going to be very important year on year. And in terms of my manager attributes, uh, I'm not a coach. I mean, I have no coaching badges in real life, so I decided to put everything into the mentals because, you know, I I've got great player knowledge and I'm a great motivator and people management. I, it sounds like I'm writing a LinkedIn profile here. I'll admit it, I do feel a little bit bad for Urs Fischer, the man who we've just dislodged, because he has done a phenomenal job at Union Berlin. To get them Champions League football is mad. He actually got them promoted to the Bundesliga a few years ago. He was sacked as Basel manager after winning the Swiss Super League twice. He was done dirty, didn't get a job for a year, went to Union Berlin. He's done a load of good work, and now I'm going to Hopefully not ruin it all. And well, here we are at Union Berlin. Ignore the fact in the top right, it says June 2022. You can't change start dates. Well, you can change start dates in Football Manager, but it's not great. Just, just imagine the twos are free and everything will be fine, I promise. Now, I did already discuss our key man, Robin Nock. I'm going to be honest, at 31 years old, he is one of the more valuable players in our team. And I have had a little look through this team. Centre-back is actually an area where this team has some okay squad depth, so... I could maybe look to sell him on. The only other player who I think I might be able to sell on is Geraldo Becker, who has been linked with a move away from Union in real life. He's a great little striker, but he is also valued at £10 million. And as we've already established, if I want to sign anyone, which I kind of do want to sign some players, I do need some Wonga. Now, looking through this team, there's a few things that stand out to me. Firstly, uh, there is a, there's a lack of wing backs. In fact, this guy here, he's not he's not at the club, so moving down to the under 19s. Uh, we've got one left back, Juranovic, who can play both sides, who I believe signed for Union Berlin in real life. Um, you can see 7.25 million pounds from Celtic. Good little player. Not sure I would have spent £7 million on him, mind you. We've got Rani Kadira here, 29 years old, a real pillar of the team. I have just spotted his contract expires in a 
few weeks. Why why does his Dortmund want him? Okay, well, I'm going to offer him a new d deal then. Uh, please, 30... He wants his 3.7 million... Minimum, min the minimum release clause. I can't get my word. I'm... 3.7 million pound minimum release. You're literally our best player. Or one of our best. Is he our, He's one of our best players. Am I about to lose him for nothing? I did just note, he was asking for 33,000 pounds. Our current highest earner earns 26,000 pounds. Having just managed in the Premier League, this feels rather different. Our hot prospect is apparently Laurence Dell. Is Laurence any good? I mean, he might be better in real life. I feel like in the next Football Manager, all these players are going to get monster upgrades having seen Union Berlin finishing fourth. They don't have them here. We're in the Champions League this seat. This first transfer window is going to be important, I fear. Now, the good news is time is on my side because we have set a start date of the 13th of June. I've got a long time to plan out and plot a pre-season. First game of the season is against Eintracht Frankfurt. They are a team that have qualified for the Conference League their media prediction is sixth. They're a good little team. Right, I think the best course of action here is for me to play through preseason and join you guys in a moment to discuss my grand plans for the season. How are we going to get this team to compete? Is it realistic to think I can get European football again next year? Based on what I've seen so far, no, no, it's not. Okay, it has been a rather eventful two months here at Union Berlin. I have done a lot of wheeling and dealing. I have sold some potential fan favourites. I needed money, I'm sorry, but I think I'm prepared for the season. I've really said that convincingly. First things first, I know you're all wondering, Jack, did you manage to keep hold of Kadira? You, you are thinking that, right? Yeah, um, no, 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 I didn't. Uh, he's gone to Bayern Munich. He didn't even go to Dortmund. We've lost a player on a free transfer to Bayern Munich. We, at this point now, we are officially a Bundesliga manager. We have been baptised as a Bundesliga club. If Bayern are stealing your players, then you're big time. It's annoying to lose our best defence in midfielder, though. Elsewhere, Robin Nock did end up leaving the club. We sold him to Dortmund. Like I already mentioned, he was one of the most important players in this team in terms of overall ability, but at 31 years old, he held some crucial resale value. I feel like to get £7.5 million for him was a good deal. I do appreciate you now look at his new transfer value, and it looks like the worst deal ever. Um, I, I, we would never have got that kind of money for him. Becker did also end up leaving the club, so that has left a little bit of a gap in the striking department that we have attempted to fill. Uh, he has departed the club for, as you can see here, £10.5 million. He is a good player, a versatile player, can play it out on the wings, but that's not going to be that important for us because I think this year... We're not playing with wingers. The only other player of real significant note I've let go in this first transfer window is Behrens here. He has gone to Hanover. He's not very good. We need young blood in this team. And young blood is what I've attempted to bring into the team with our first wildcard signing. So like I already mentioned, one non-German signing per year. Guernsey fans out there rejoice. Guernsey viewers from Park to Prem rejoice. People who would live it had never signed this guy back for Guernsey. I've made him my first transfer here at Union Berlin. Alex Scott, you're probably familiar familiar with him if you play football manager we've picked him up for 11.5 million pounds that is 5 million pounds up front 6.5 million spread out over three years with us having champions league football this year i am anticipating that the balance balance is going to go up a little bit so with that i did opt to do a few transfer dealings they involve these clauses over years that hopefully there's money in the bank for them when we have to pay them off. Ultimately, though, Alex Scott is a phenomenal talent in Football Manager, a really versatile player. For us, I think he's going to be playing as an advanced playmaker in the centre of the midfield. But to be honest, at 19, he is the kind of player who I feel like you can train for a load of different roles. So if, if, the, if I'm using him incorrectly, if you've used your Alex Scott at home differently, let me know how you have trained him up. He is a really, really good player, though. I'm hoping... He's going to be worth the money, not just because I've spent almost half the summer spend on him, but also because he is now the highest earner at the club, age 19. Now, Schalke missed out on promotion last year in real life, and we have somewhat plucked the carcass of Schalke, by which I mean I stole all their good young players. City Sane has joined the club. If you're wondering, is he related to Leroy? Uh, I, I can confirm they're brothers. So if he's as good as Leroy Sane, we're on to a winner. Uh, hopefully he's not as injury prone as his brother. Also, we have to discuss it. Most versatile player in the squad. He can play everywhere except in goal. I feel like if I saw a player like this in the future of Football Manager, I'd consider it abuse. But I assume he can just play everywhere in real life. Mehmet Aiden has joined the club from Schalke as well. This guy is a good little fullback option. We've actually been training him to play left back as well as right back. That was an area of the squad where we had zero depth. So to add this guy in at 21 years old, I think is a good little deal. Picked up for £2.1 million. 
That's a bargain. Another bargain from Schalke, you might be noticing a trend here. Florian Flick, 23 years old, was unhappy at Schalke after their failed attempt to get promotion. We picked him up for £1.7 million. Pounds. Our midfield it's full of beavers, and I think that's going to be to our advantage. With our squad, we aren't going to be considered an underdog in a lot of the different games that we play in. And when it comes to the tactical system, I'm thinking we're going to play something like this, maybe with the advanced playmaker further up. But ultimately, one of the big strengths of our team, if I just show you the uh, squad profile view here, is the determination and is the work rate of our centre midfielders. I mean, you can see here, it's absolutely ridiculous. So pressing to get the ball hard is going to be the name of the game. And I really want to have this solid unit of a midfield kind of four in the middle doing all that legwork. With that in mind, Flick fits the profile of the kind of player we're looking for. Additionally, with us playing with a load of centre mids, I don't need as many wide players. So we can kind of get away with a slightly smaller, less high quality squad because there's less versatility needed across the team's playing positions. The last player we picked up from Schalke is actually a really interesting deal. You guys can let me know if you think this is going to work out for us. Asan Udreago. Definitely said that correctly. Uh, 17 years old, on loan from Schalke, the 17-year-old. Despite the fact that they play in the league below us, he didn't want to join me permanently, so I loaned him with, a, with an option to buy him for 5.75 million. I mean, look, he's 17 years old. He is a phenomenal young German talent. I think just to have the option to sign him for 5.75 million is nice. We'll monitor his development this year, maybe try and give him some first-team football here and there, see how it works out. If he doesn't really develop... We'll just send him back to Schalke. Schalke weren't the only Bundesliga 2 team, though, that we have plucked a load of players from. Shout out to Hertha Berlin, our neighbours across the city, also our rivals. Yeah, you can see here, three players signed from them. The first, Engerkam, uh, definitely said that correctly. Um, this guy, 23 years old, phenomenal pressing forward, looks amazing, good value for money, I think, at £2.7 million. Pounds. Ignore the fact he's really injury prone and just pretend that that doesn't exist. If you ignore it, he looks like a phenomenal player. If he gets injured today, I'll be upset. Mark Oliver Kempf is a good little centre-back option. With us losing Robin Nock, I did want to get someone in. Kempf here joined us for £2.5 million plus a player exchange. The player of exchange is someone who's not very good. Um, if we just compare him with Nock, of course, Nock left for £7.5 million. I think Kempf, as far as replacements go, yeah, he's not maybe quite as good in the defending or mentals department, but physically he's better. And I think for 2.5 million, it's hard to look at it as a bad deal. Also, and this signing was made purely because I wanted to just, you know, kick her to Berlin while they're down. Uh, Yannick Mausund has joined the club, 17 years old, was one of their hot prospects. I have no idea why, but apparently he's an awkward goalkeeper. Yeah, I, I, I can't train him as a goalkeeper. I have no idea why he has that. Let's not question it. Final few players to talk about real quick. Dennis Undav has joined us from Brighton on loan for the year. Young-ish German strike. I say young-ish. I'm turning 30 this week. 27 is now young. If you've not watched me in a while on YouTube, I'm a changed man. I think this guy's going to be a useful little squad player for us. Um, did I have an option to buy him? I do have an option to buy him. £4.3 million. Pounds. He's going to have to score 20 goals for me to be convinced to do that. I don't think he's got 20 goals in him. The former German international Plattenhart has joined us on a free transfer as well at 31 years old. Not exactly expecting fireworks from the left back. Uh, I just needed another left back. I, I, I wish it was a more interesting transfer than that. And the final addition, maybe a little more interesting, Daniel. I know what you're thinking. Jack, you've signed a Brazil. You've broken your rule episode. No, 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 no. Look, he's part German. He's part Israeli. He's part Brazilian. I've never heard of him. Apparently, he's been playing for Maccabi Tel Aviv for many years. Here is Daniel. Damn, Daniel. Hopefully, you're a backup goalkeeper. I'll, I'll never do that again. So I did already touch on it a little bit, but here's the tactical system that we are going to be playing year one, I think. I mean, if everything goes wrong, we won't obviously stick with it, but a 4-1-3-2. I think this is a formation that's going to give us a really good defensive shape with the ability to catch teams out on the break. Out of possession, we are having a low, low block, so we're not going to engage high up the pitch, but when we do engage, I do want us to press really, really hard. As soon as teams enter our final third, that's when we're going to get stuck into them. As I already mentioned, the midfield that we've got is just full of beavers. We've got Alex Scott, who's going to be that creative threat. We've then got Forsby, who's going to be the set-piece threat. This man has 16 jumping reach and 16 heading and is... To be honest, a ridiculous defensive midfielder. Habera is one of our two box-to-box -box midfielders to start the first game of the season. This guy, again, he's a beaver. He's a warrior. Look at the mental bit of the polygon. It's sticking out more than everything else. 16 teamwork, 18 work rate, 17 stamina. 
Uh, we've just got a team of runners. Laduni here, maybe not quite as much of a runner, uh, but does have good stamina, does have good work rate, not a bad little creative outlet. And ultimately, I think one thing that is going to benefit us this year is going to be the fact that we are going to be viewed as an underdog club. Media prediction of 12th. I mean, when you look at the facilities... They're not exactly great. I suppose an interesting dilemma actually over the course of this first season and probably into the second season is what are we going to do with the Champions League money? Because the reality is that this year we're not going to finish top four. It's very, very unlikely to happen. And with that in mind, we're going to have one big lump sum of Champions League TV money goodness and then not get any more money. Do I use it to buy players? Do I use it to invest in facilities? Given this focus on German talent... I probably should upgrade the youth recruitment, shouldn't I? Our facilities, uh, mm, they're not great. Uh, that's what I'm going to say. As I already mentioned at the top of the episode, today we are taking on Eintracht Frankfurt. For people wondering, Jack, are away days coming over from Park to Prem into this save game? They absolutely are. So we, we will have those for future episodes. And if you're sat there thinking... What's an away day? Maybe it's your first time here. You should totally go and watch Park to Prem, the series we just wrapped up. You've only got 150 episodes to watch. If you watch them continuously day after day, I think it takes like four days to watch. So I'll see you for episode five of the Union Berlin save. Did already talk about the team a little bit, of course, and Gangkam is playing up top. He's the man we picked up from Hertha Berlin. Got big expectations for him. Elsewhere, we've got Jordan Sibachiu. Nailed it. Um, this guy, American international, he's big, he's meaty, he's going to be in the box of set pieces. I'm hoping he's going to be good for us. If he could get a better goal scoring record than his American national team record, that would be good. Haven't talked about him yet. Rono is going to be starting in goal for us. The Great Dane, 31 years old, not got a load of years left in him, although he is a goalkeeper, so maybe he could play another nine years. Super consistent performer, loves important matches. Talked about Juranovic, he is listed as one of our key players in the squad. The 27 year old is a good little fullback and well the same could be said for on the other side where we have Rousselon who I'll be honest he, he, he's not great defensively but he can get forward okay and he likes to run and I feel like that's the benchmark for our team at the moment. Do you like to run? Yes. If you do, welcome to Union Berlin. Lastly, just to mention the centre-backs, we have got Heinz, who is a, an interesting player, 29 years old. I was able to get him on a new contract. He was a player who did have his contract expiring at the end of the year. He's a good little centre-back option. And alongside him, you can see here, we've got Kempf, who is the man we picked up from Hertha Berlin. Big boots to fill in Robin Knox boots, hopefully. They have the same size feet because I need him to slot in perfectly. Okay, here we are. Bundesliga match day one. I forget. We get all the fancy Bundesliga graphics as well. Don't be managing here. Union Berlin taking on Frankfurt or Eintracht Frankfurt. I think there's other teams from Frankfurt, so we should probably be precise. Does go without saying. Been a while since I managed in Germany. If I'm butchering pronunciations, inform me, educate me, reform me. Maybe for episode 20, I'll have it all nailed down. But yes, we're here. We're managing Union Berlin. We did play one game in pre-season in the DFK, DFK, Pokal, the cup competition. We won it against some random lower league team. We won 6-0. So I'm hoping a little bit of that form is going to translate into action here. We have had a really good early chance here. Maybe a chance from this cross in to make something happen. Kolo Moani is going to get away. Leduni, what can you do, E? Forsby. Habera, well, this is this is a pointless highlight, isn't it? Football manager, mm. why show me that? What It's wasting my time, it's wasting your time at home. There is this palpable excitement. I don't know if you can feel it in the video today. It's so exciting to start a new save game in Football Manager on YouTube. It's such a big deal. I ummed and I ahed about what team I wanted to manage. Union Berlin, though, I think is going to be a really fun project that is not going to cause me pain and suffering and, of course, is going to go all to plan immediately with this game here. I mean, we're taking on a team predicted to finish in the European spots this coming year. By comparison, we're predicted to finish in the bottom half. Ideally, I want to get at least a point at home here. I would love to see us getting some goal-scoring action going. Jordan, Scott, Alex Scott, w welcome to Union Berlin, my friend. It is going to be an interesting dynamic with this save game, the, uh, the wildcard signings, the one non-German signing per season, because it's a case of... Do I sign a player who I'm desperate to sign because they're amazing? Do I sign a player for a specific position because I can't find a German player who can do that role the same way? Obviously, this year, it was a little easier to go with. Alex Scott, I think, was a bit of a no-brainer signing having just managed Guernsey where he started his career. And he also fits the team rather well. We needed a creative spark. We found that spark. He scored already. Max on the far side. Going to get forward towards Colo Moani, who had an incredible season, if I'm not mistaken, in real life in the Bundesliga, the French forward. Good little player. I'm going to flex my ball knowledge here. Trap. 
laying it wide to Nauf, the right back, stepping up with the ball for Eintracht Frankfurt, getting it wide. How? Dispossessed by Habra. Rousselon now with it is going to look to go down the line. Cock wins the ball and gives it to Pacho. I feel like this is this is a nervy start to things, isn't it? Although, and Gankam's won the ball in a great area. Can he get forward now? The former Hertha Berlin man hits the woodwork because he's a donkey. He's a traitor. Why did I sign players from my rival club? I'll tell I'll tell you why. Because they they got relegated and they were affordable. I, I wonder if in real life Union Berlin are going to sign any Hertha players. Probably not. I feel like the rivalry is a little fierce. But look, we're here to make friends, and if they're friends from across the city. It's fine. What's just happened here? That can't be a goal, can it? Can we get a VAR check? VAR check, please. Muani scored. He's whirling away. They're very convinced it's a goal, aren't they? It's not a goal. Oh, okay. Everything's fine. Was this offside when the ball was put in? Oh, it wasn't even close. Ne never doubted it. Everything's fine. Okay, half time in this game. It's not been a classic. There's been three shots on target in the first 45. But, crucially... We are ahead. I could tell the players I'm really pleased and to keep it up, but if you're thinking I should do that, you've not been here before. I'm far from pleased. Lads, sort it out. We need to do better. Also, Haber is on a booking. Can I trust a man with 18 aggression not to get sent off? I'm going to give him 15 minutes. We'll see what he does. Okay, we're coming up to 70 minutes played here. Probably should make some subs. We're allowed nine subs in the Bundesliga. I actually don't know how many you're allowed to make during a game. I'm going to guess it's it, it's five. Uh, Flick, you can come in for those legs in the midfield. Plattenhardt in at left back for Rousselon. The one thing I don't want now is to go down a man. And Gankam, no, he, he can't. He can't. Uh, and Gam can't should be his name. He's going to come off. We're going to bring in Datro Fafana, who we have got on loan from Chelsea. We'll give him a chance here to show us what he's worth. Forsby is looking tired. Can I make more subs? Schaffer. Andras Schaffer, on you come. You're going to play as the defence... Uh, no, he's not. No, that would be a mental idea. Flick, you're going to play as the defensive midfielder. Schaffer, box to box. Does anyone else have it where when you first take over a club, the first game where you sit down to make your subs, you kind of realise, I never planned for this. I've never really thought about what I'm going to do in certain situations. Ten games into the season, you kind of know like a Rubik's Cube, how you want to shuffle things around. I don't have a Scooby-Doo right now. I'm hoping the changes that we've made aren't going to prove to be too disastrous. Because they're on the attack right now, and now I'm scared. Haug is bringing the ball forward in the wide area. One man in the middle, same for all. It's Lindstrom. It's headed, headed away, but not completely away from danger here. Rode with the ball at the edge of the box. Could go wide and does. The right back now for inside. Keeper needs to go big here. Keeper can't go big here. Yes, but Lindstrom scores. To be fair... It was a nice goal. We are, I feel like in this game here, being done on the overlap. Obviously, with us not having any naturally kind of wide midfielders, more attacking players, there is a bit of freedom for fullbacks to do stuff. Obviously, over the course of this save game, we will tactically tinker. Ball whip back post. I wanted to believe something could happen. Alex Scott, make magic happen. I've spent £11.5 million on you. Do something. Platten out the left back. Don't know why I actually started to believe he could score that. Eight minutes left here. Is there a late sting in the tail? Is there a late twist to come here in our first game in charge? Why is there a highlight playing? Why do they have the ball? Max is bringing the ball forward at left back. I mean, defensively there, the shape is shocking. Mamouche into the middle. They've do they've scored the same goal twice. I hate football manager. Can we, <laughs> do it. Can we start a new series tomorrow? I guess this is going to be something to manage something to look at the idea that if i am going to have a lower line of engagement we are going to allow a lot of space for wing backs to get the ball forward the more i think about it, the more i realize that might not be the best idea but rome wasn't built in a day my union berlin dream wasn't built in a day we'll be back tomorrow same time and place to try and fix this i mean they scored two goals where they've squared it in the six yard box not, not even good football. If you're wondering, Jack, how long is it going to take for you to throw a water bottle? Uh, one episode. I've made players angry. It'll be fine. First Bundesliga game in charge. I've, I've kept the team locked in the dressing room, apparently. I don't remember clicking that, Jordan. I think you're making up fake stories about me, and I do not appreciate it. Now, technically, the transfer window is still open, and technically, we do have a little bit of money to spend. Uh, the way I structured some deals was with clauses over years, so we are able to spend a little bit more money than what we actually managed to recoup. We have also put a bit of the money into the wage budget, as you might have noticed. So, based on what we've just seen there, maybe I'm going to go and find some more German players to sign out of blind panic in the next two weeks before the window closes. Now, I don't know for certain yet, but it might be when we come back next time, we know our Champions League group. I know, yeah, we're in the group stages of the Champions League. Very exciting. Probably going to get 
spanked for the year. But that'll be fun. We might not have won, but let's look at a positive. Alex Scott, first game for the club, first goal for the club from centre mid. The, the pause there is because I have just remembered I promised Alex Scott I was going to play him as a centre attacking mid. And for that game there, I played him as a centre mid. I'm sure it'll be fine. And with that, I think that is the end of episode one here at Union Berlin. Thank you so much for getting to the end of the video if you have done so. If you haven't already, do go down below, hit the subscribe button, make sure to like the episodes as well. This kind of long form story content I do on YouTube doesn't really fit the algorithm that well. Um, people don't click on episode 30 as the first video they watch. So for this episode, especially episode one, all the engagement you can give does actually make a massive, massive difference. It is appreciated. Algorithm Ultras assemble. And just as a little bit of a reminder, episodes of this series will be coming every single weekday at midday UK time. Hopefully you're going to be joining me here same time and place tomorrow. We've lost our best player to Bayern. We've just lost our first game in charge and there's not a lot of money to reinvest in the squad. Things can only get better tomorrow. I'll see you guys for it. Until then, take it easy. It's me, Jack. I'll talk to you all in a bit. I'm out.